Hey there, folks. I'm Matt Hansen. And I'm John Johnson. And you're listening to Planes, Trains, and Comic Books. The podcast where we discuss favorites we've reread, both classic and new comics we want to read, and everything else in between. And here's the comic we picked this week. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Planes, Trains, and Comic Books. Today we are doing a, what is it called? What would we call these? So, uh, well, I mean, we're, so we're, we're separated. We're separated. <laughs> but we're making we're, sure we're, the kids are okay, right? That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to call it our Easter special. <laughs> right, it's our Easter <laughs> special. But, uh, but we're doing this you know separate because uh john got a little sick this week so and i got a oh, pretty, oh, pretty yeah. busy day today but uh so yeah john is at his place i'm in my place but yeah we are celebrating easter this week which is early but still it's the month of easter and um we did that because we're going to do the the you know the second podcast which actually falls on easter is actually the uh the voted the voted one if you are patreon so um so yeah, we decided screw it. We'll just do that this week, and it'll be good. And the book we picked is American Jesus, which is a book that just finished recently, and it took about 19 years to finish. And it's only nine issues, so <laughs> surprisingly, uh, it took that long to finish. Uh, and it is by Mark Miller and Peter Gross. And uh, yeah, have you have you ever heard of this, John? No, not until you had you had mentioned it. And this and we talked about this a while back, even before you read it the first time initially. Um, that we you know we were looking for something because we always like to do something on some of the bigger, you know, Americanized holidays or whatever. And um I think we talked Easter about is this. more of more than just America though, right? Well, I mean it, yeah, I mean I I guess it's, it's it's a Christian holiday, so it's a Christian holiday, yeah. But anyway. I don't know. <laughs> I, I am, but um, so we uh, we were talking about what we what we might do, and you had mentioned that you heard that uh, this one was good, and again, I, either it had just finished, you hadn't read it yet, or no, I had yeah, just I think, finished it. No, 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 because we talked about this. A, I'm talking about like we we were when we were discussing like we like early like planning out some of the year. Oh, okay. I don't uh, remember that. I just remember reading this and be like, wow, this was great, and then we need to read this for this. So. Well, either way, it was you, you was on our your radar, and I and I was like uh, Mark Miller and something about a new, a new new Christ. I'm down. That sounds interesting. And it's, yeah. yeah, and then they say American Jesus. Like, okay, where's this gonna go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I yeah, I I mean, I picked this up and I just started reading. I think book one was available on Hoopla. So I was like, oh, let me read book one. And then the end of book one has such a good cliffhanger that i read book two and then i saw that book three wasn't even out yet for you know uh, checking out on hoopla and in fact the last issue hadn't i don't think it, it had come out yet or it had just come out like the week before for the third volume so i was like oh like this is like still going on because this said from 2004 and uh and yeah apparently if you read all like the notes and stuff basically he did like a three issue series for the first trade. They took a break. It probably didn't do like amazing, you know, maybe it was like, this is before Mark Miller was Mark Miller. You know, it was before civil war is before, like, I think he was just writing it's before ultimates, but he was just writing ultimate X-Men, I think. So like he wasn't quite what everybody knows him as now. Um, and I think he had done wanted, I think that, or either that, or he was like in the middle of writing wanted at the same time. So he wasn't quite the milk, the Mark Miller everybody knows and loves now, or or like doesn't like because some people don't like his work. But, uh, but uh, yeah, so this one was uh, under my radar completely. I never heard of it, um, and I guess I was just like, oh, I want to read some more Mark Miller stuff because he's been doing a lot of things recently, and he has a whole uh, thing with Netflix, like where yeah, they bought his he, entire catalog. So yeah, you said he got a huge Netflix deal. Um, that's wild. Yeah, they bought Miller World. They called it. This was in 2016, and they bought every one of his properties, and everybody that did the art on it too, like all his co-creators, they all got bank. So Sean Murphy, who did one with them, got bank. Peter Gross, who did this book, got bank. So that's cool. Like he basically made the biggest payday that any of those guys have gotten 
probably forever for comics at least and uh you know and it was just because they did some work with them and he was able to sell it to netflix when they were looking for stuff to put on tv so and speaking of that this book's actually coming out on netflix as a show this year so oh wow yeah and the game (laughs) yeah exactly so we can repost this one whenever that show is going to come out but uh so yeah we'll just get into it the first book is called chosen this book is actually or this series is, is three volumes once the first one's called chosen the second one's called the new messiah and the third volume's called revelations um and as you could probably guess it is about jesus and has to do with christianity and jesus things like the end of times and whatnot um and we start off with this kid named jody uh christensen and john did you notice that his initials are jc yeah okay i didn't notice that until way later rereading it this time i was like (laughs) wait a second his his initials are jc all right cool um so uh he's just a normal kid doing normal stupid shit you know playing with friends uh out in the middle of nowhere um and like they're just talking about girls and whatever and he's he's under a bridge like they're they're walking in the woods he's under a bridge and there's a dog that runs out on the street above on the bridge and a, and a truck you know swerves to miss the dog and falls down off the bridge and crushes jody and it's a big semi truck like. it's a semi truck yeah this isn't like a small truck it's like it's definitely going to kill him if he's you know a normal child so he wakes up in the hospital nothing's wrong with him and everybody's like oh my god it's like a miracle kind of and people are asking his parents like how, how do you think this happened and they're like we don't know uh even like the the local pastor is asking you know that he's saying like oh if you need anything let me know but how do you think uh that boy survived you know um and no no one really knows what's going on but the first thing that we see that gets kind of like huh maybe something is going on other than we already know the name of the book right so we're assuming like okay this is the something supernatural has to do with possibly jesus or something um and so but he's in the hospital with you know the nurse and the nurse says like hey like you're something special you lived for a reason and in fact you know i know this because we've been keeping an eye on you and like you you're very special um And like, why do you think your dad and mom haven't like laid with each other forever? Like they're just there to protect you kind of thing. He's never seen them like kiss or feel affection for each other. So um, that's kind of like the first time we see something is out of the, out of the ordinary, besides the fact that a guy hit by a truck and didn't die. Um, What'd you think about that interaction with the nurse, John? Yeah. I mean, it definitely was odd. I was like, okay, like, who is this person? Is she like, you know, uh, like, cause I saw she, you know, she, she had a little name tag on and I was like, okay. So like they're trying, I, and it was her name, it said her name was Libby. So I was trying to like, in my head, I was like, okay, is that supposed to like be referenced to somebody biblical or, and so like, I'm, I'm, I'm going over that. And I'm like, okay, I don't know. But you know, she's obviously like trying to guide him. So I was like, is he like, you know, is it like an angel? Is it like God? Is it something else? Right. So it, she basically yeah, she tells him like, you're going to have powers soon. Yeah. Like she says, like you are gonna start manifesting powers because you are a special you're, boy. You're a teenager, and you're gonna start noticing some changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, <laughs> you get hair, normal changes. <laughs> yeah, extra special changes. Yeah, you're gonna get hair in places like a full beard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so he gets he thinks that's weird, but you know he leaves uh, the hospital and and for a while, like because of the accident he's allowed to get out of school like as even though he's okay it's just like you know it was traumatic so you know you get to stay out of school for a couple weeks so he hangs out with one of his friends and they like they they have like a little bit of a of a little high school crush kind of thing or middle school he's supposed to be 12 i think so yeah um, and, and i guess this is it was hard to tell from the beginning we we find later on you know the, when he was born exactly but i guess it was supposed to be like the late 70s early 80s right yeah yeah, you can tell if you do the math, you know, like later yeah. on, because they they mentioned like September 11th later on. So you're like, if he's this old now, go back, yeah. you know, this many years. You're okay, yeah. So it's like, yeah, late 70s, early 80s. Um, so he goes to school eventually, and the first day he's back, he gets called to his teacher after class. His teacher says, "So, uh, what the hell is this?" And he's like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "The test 
you got a you got a hundred percent on this test and you've you've never been smart so what the fuck and he's like what do you mean and then his his teacher keeps quizzing him like you know what what were the answers and like oh if you're so smart then what day did castro you know get all, try to get assassinated and all this stuff and all of a sudden jody knows every answer to every question that he's saying and uh and eventually the mom gets called to the school because Jody is standing in front of all the teachers and they're all asking him random, you know, questions about math, science, geography, history, and he's getting everything right. And he's telling them, you know, oh yeah, this is the Pythagorean theorem. This is what's going on with this. Um, I love that he's like, like I, was oh, saying, I love that. I love that he's like starts egging them on because he's like, oh wow, I know that. I know that. And like, so he's like, he's getting kind of cocky about it too. Well, yeah, as a kid would, you know, you think yeah. you're fucking awesome. Um, and then, his mom comes to pick him up and she seems kind of mad. So she takes him home and she says like, Hey, you remember that Bible story about Jesus when he was 12 and he, you know, went to the temple and he was teaching all the people, all the Pharisees and uh, the parents were worried and they found him. Well, basically, yeah, that's a, that's a real story. And um, like, this is, this is basically you are, uh someone special she doesn't say exactly what he is but she says like you know it's it's all in the bible basically and like why do you think me and your dad never touch each other and then she says that he was um she says that he that she's never had sex with his dad so he was like an immaculate conception mm. and that's an interesting thing as well um so yeah, and and she's telling him like, oh yeah, you're going to have powers eventually, and like you'll see when they start manifesting. Um, and then when he comes into the house, there's like people in his house, right? Oh no, no, there's not people in his house. He comes into his house, he runs up to his room, and then all of this is actually being told like in the future. So like he's telling people in the pa- in the future how he grew up or whatever, and how he found out. And so we're seeing him like older, and there's a bunch of people that are very like oh, thank you, you know, so much. Your flight leaves for Israel soon, and thank you for meeting us and all this stuff. So he's, like, telling all these random people, like, what happened in his life early on. And he seems very important there, obviously, so. Yeah, very important. So we don't quite know exactly what's going on, but uh, but when he, you know, he he goes back into his story, and um, we see that when he's, he's looking, when he gets upstairs, he's looking at the Bible, and he's like, holy shit. So it's like, he's like, oh, my God, I'm Jesus. Like, I'm the reincarnation of Jesus. I'm the second coming of Jesus. And so uh, he goes to Father Higgins, the preacher that we saw earlier, the priest. And it turns out that Father Higgins hasn't really believed in God uh, since his mother died recently, right? His mother, is it his mother and his brother or just his mother? Both of them, yeah. His mother died. And then it was like a couple months later, his, yeah, his best friend, or his, his brother, pardon me, uh, yeah. died. Yeah, so he's been like, ever since then, which was a couple of years ago, he's been like down in the dumps and like people stop going to his church as much and stuff. And so he's kind of, he's basically kind of lost his faith, you know? And uh, Jody comes to him and says like, Hey, uh, you know, like, do you believe in God? You know, like, like, what do you think about me being like the second coming of Christ? And he's like, what? Like, (laughs) the hell are you talking about kid? Like, no, I don't think you are the son of God. And then uh, we also see that he's got the dog that caused the accident in the first place and that he has grown very attached to that dog. And it means a lot to him now. Um, And so, so like they have this talk about like how Jody thinks that he's, you know, the son of God reincarnated and the pastor is like, no, you're not, but you know, try not to get too big of a head. Um, You know, just because you survived a truck falling on you doesn't mean that. Yeah, obviously there's something special about you, but you're you're not the son of God. So yeah, so Jody, you know, he's he doesn't quite listen to that, and he decides, you know what, I'm going to try to do some actual miracles, and he's kind of egged on by his classmates. So he like, you know, there's no one blind in the town, but he he gets the kid the kid with the worst eyesight, and he tries to cure him, and then he tries to make water into wine, and this is all like in one day at one tree where all the kids are hanging out, and they're trying to get him to do these things, and like his friend who's a girl has a checklist. And she's going down like the miracles of Jesus. So they're they're like sitting there doing this and nothing seems to be happening. But then at the end of the day, 
there's like an argument between him and one kid who's like, you're not Jesus. See, you can't do any of this stuff. And like when they have that argument, all of a sudden things start to get miracle. -y, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, waters turn to wine in front of them. And then when the next time the kid with the glasses goes to the eye doctor, all of a sudden he's got 20, 20 vision. He like heals a hamster is one of, one of the things I can see. Um, and this like, there's, it looks like a sick hamster and he's like got his hands around it. Like he's projecting an aura. Um, but the, one of the problems uh, that he comes across is that the other kids start treating him weird because they start believing that he is God. Um, and then also uh, the bully or he gets a bully and that bully is actually the son of the truck driver who's in critical condition with a uh, coma. And so uh, that, that the son of that guy starts picking on him saying like, Oh, you're Jesus, huh? How come you don't save my dad? And because of that, he decides, you know what? I am gonna uh, help this kid's dad out. So um, like, I think the bully actually goes over to his house to like, please, if you are actually God, you know, like help my dad out. So he's trying to like, Jody's also trying to get like more holy and sanctimonious, right? Like he starts like not masturbating and not smoking and not, you know, trying to be bad and not swearing. And, um, and so like, he goes to the hospital with this kid. That's his bully to, to talk to his dad. And he, you know, his dad is in a full coma, hasn't woke up. He's covered in bandages. He's lost an eye. Uh, he's even got like a breather on him. So the son waits outside the room for what, like a half hour or something like that, or a couple hours. And um, so the dad comes out and is like, Petey. And like, it's like a total miracle. Like no one can deny that this is a miracle, right? So um, it's, it's a pretty big deal. Everybody hears about this one. And this is where like everybody in the town really starts, you know, saying he's God. Um, and the pastor in the town gets kind of mad at him. He actually picks Petey, or he actually picks Jody up and he's like, Hey, like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Like, you're not the son of God. I, I've known a lot of people and you, sir, are not the son of God. <laughs> and, uh, and then like Jody even says like, well, you know, maybe that's why maybe you stop believing in God. And maybe that's why people stop coming to your church. And like the pastor gets super pissed at that. And he's like, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's like, like you get out of my car before I kick your ass. And uh, so like, that's kind of where we leave it on issue two is everybody is now like fully involved believing in him, except the pre the priest in the town. Then um, the, the, who is the other oh, principal or the, no, the teacher of his class is also a guy that's been doubting him. But once he starts hearing that, he, he actually uh, brought the dad back to life from the coma. Uh, he has a mother who's like sick of cancer. So he says, Hey, like Jody, I'm not sure if I believe all this, but you come over and you cure my mom. And so he goes over there and this was like an interesting one. I thought, cause like Jody talks to the mom and then he tells his, his, his teacher, like, Hey, I can't do it. And, He's like, why? Like, you did it for Petey's dad. And he's like, well, she doesn't want to go. Like, she wants to be here. Or she just doesn't want to be here anymore. He's like, I could give her, like, five or ten years, but, like, eventually she's going to die. And uh, and the mommy's even like, yeah, like, just let me go. Like, like uh, I don't want to be here. I want to be in heaven again kind of thing. And also, the fact that she now knows that there's a heaven because – Jody's presence confirms, right? Like if, if someone is saying that they are the com second coming of Christ and they are healing people and stuff, if you're oh, about to yeah. die, you're like, Oh, well, like everything I believe my whole life is real, like officially now. So she's like, I'm going to, I'm going to let this go now. I'm good to go. I'm going to go to heaven. Um, so yeah, like that's, that's like the first big miracle that also like the, the preacher hears about uh, besides Petey's dad. And, he's actually friends with the teacher. So he kind of believes that more than the coma thing. Um, I don't I guess it's not like a miracle, but it's like, you know, it's just like, I'm sure that the guy tells him like, Hey, your mom, my mom is going to die. But she was very comforted by the fact after she talked to Jody, that there is a heaven kind of thing. Yeah. She was basically like, no, I'm ready to go then. Man. That's fine. Like, yeah. And we also I'm see good. that there's like a caravan of people that are following Jody around that have signs that say like Jody saves uh, and then we get the first hint and this is the, you were telling me this, John, where you were reading this. You're like, why does Matt think this book's amazing? 
Like it's pretty by the numbers, kind of like a standard, like kid becomes Jesus Christ second coming thing. Like it, it's not very unique or whatever at first. Right. But this is like the first hint we get here of maybe it's not everything is right uh, or is what we think it is. And we see that somewhere in Washington, DC, uh, Jody's mom is calling this guy that looks like a Texan. He's got like a cowboy hat and boots. And, uh, she's she's calling him and he's saying you know miss christensen calm down uh, like basically like the plan is going as needed and uh you know once once jody fully gets like his powers we're going to take him and you know he'll be with us and he can visit you anytime he wants and the mom is very like angry about that so something's going on with like there's a conspiracy of people in washington dc that know about jody already even though this town just found out and so did Jody. Um, so it seems like the parents are aware of what's going on too. So the teacher, the math teacher, uh, talks to um, the the priest and the, and tells him, "Yeah, I think Jody's real." And the priest is like, "Fine, if Jody's real, then uh, you know I I don't know what to do. Like like maybe I'm gonna get my faith back, kind of thing." And then the dog gets hit by a car. And this is the dog that he inherited from the lady that I guess got the old lady that let it run out in front of the truck that caused this whole thing to come into effect. And, uh, and so the dog gets hit by a car and I love this. There's a panel of the dog right before he gets hit where he's seeing a ball and he's going to chase the ball. And it's the funniest fucking dog face I've ever seen. It just looks like, huh? like, just uh-huh. straight up, yeah, just like the cutest, dumbest dog face. Um, and Actually, is is it Jody's dad that actually? Or no, it's is it Jody's dad or someone else's dad that hits them? No, it's someone else's uh, dad. Yeah, someone else's dad. Yeah. Yeah, someone else's dad hits. Oh no, it's the kid, the bully's dad. So the the truck driver himself yeah. oh, is okay. driving around now, and he the dog runs out in front of him, and there's regular car, not the truck, and uh, and he hits the dog, and then all of a sudden, oh, uh, and then so then we cut away, and this part was interesting. This was another like kind of like huh like wait a second maybe not everything is exactly what it seems it is um uh jody is sitting with his friend his his friend who's a girl what's her name again i don't remember her name uh her name is maggie maggie so he's sitting with maggie in his room and he's saying like oh my parents told me i have to go somewhere so i'm gonna leave soon and it's kind of like the last night they'll be together and so she tries to Look, there, you can tell there's like sexual tension there. So she tries to kiss him and maybe further. But then when she kisses him, she's like, oh, your mouth tastes disgusting. <laughs> and he's like, wait, what? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, there sh- there's no reason it should. But she says, like, it's fucking gross to kiss him. Like, whatever his mouth yeah. tastes like is bad. Um, but then right when that happens, all of a sudden, the, the preacher shows up at his door with the dog. And the dog is fucking dead. Like, totally dead. And... His they, yeah, they say his the dog's skull is split open, like brains coming out. And yeah, uh, he brings him in a he I love that he brings him in a tarp and he's like, he's broken, he dead, fix him. <laughs> yes, exactly. So Jody comes in and he puts his hands on the dog, and then while he and then the best thing is like, okay, he's healing this dog, but it looks very much like the omen or some shit, like ha 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 ha. <laughs> like <laughs> like we're gonna start hearing like aim you know that what i don't know what that song is but like you know something from like devil's yeah. advocate or some shit um his eyes get all white and like <laughs> like solid white there's no pupils and wind starts blowing out from nowhere and uh yeah so he puts his hands on the dogs and all of a sudden around all of pennsylvania because this is in i think philadelphia right this is say or around there somewhere oh, oh no it's in uh pit, uh Pittsburgh. Peoria. Peoria. Wait, where is that? Illinois, I believe. Illinois. Okay, I was totally wrong then. I, I don't know why I thought it was in Pittsburgh. It's one of those small towns like, you know. Yeah. At, you know, what is not Rust Belt. What is that? The <laughs> steel know. commercial steel belt. Sure, steel yeah. belt. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tommy Boy belt. That's what. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so basically everywhere within 200 miles, every all the power cuts out. Like there's a giant lightning strike everywhere. And this is just, you know, the pyrotechnics for his magic uh, that happened. So uh, he brings that dog back and that preacher is like, you are the son of God. Like, <laughs> like truly you are the son of God. And um, I, I am so thankful. I, I half heartedly 
hope that the dog would come back but still like be like mangled a bit <laughs> but mm-hmm. luckily he's like he's like perfect like his head's not split open or anything anymore right he looks he looks good as new but i i was i thought that that would have been what kind a of miracle would that be john that's like reanimator I, or some shit that's not yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh so the dog's back and then the next morning everybody's saying goodbye to jody and the i think it's the nurse from the hospital is mm-hmm. picking him up in the car in like a nice cadillac and uh then you know they're driving away and um she's like okay we're gonna go meet your father and he's like seriously we're going to meet god and she's like no silly boy whatever gave you that idea and he's like my father's god and she's like no it's the other one satan so we find out at the last page of this that he is in fact the antichrist Antichrist. not jesus the whole time you were under the assumption that because it's called american jesus i would assume and he seems to try to be doing good things that he was the new messiah but he's actually the antichrist and we see on the last pages of this that he is in the now in the present day because that was all past he was telling those stories um now we see that he is in fact the president of the united states and he is boarding air force one so the antichrist as an adult is the president of the united states and that is how the first book ends so john you tell me by this point, were you still like it's kind of generic, or were you interested? Would you have continued on to the next book? I, I still would have continued on because I did like that he he was the Antichrist. I was like, oh, okay, that's that was a, a nice twist, but it still it still didn't quite. I still wasn't quite like I was like, okay, it's like that's a fun twist, but it's still like I said, you know, it, it still kind of felt like by the numbers at first. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I was wondering just because, um, like that was enough to grab me to continue. So I was just like, okay, well, maybe because you had said, oh, you weren't sure. And you said even by the second book in the middle of it, that's where you were like, oh, okay. Um, I understand why Matt likes it. But <laughs> I was kind of surprised because I thought it was, I, I was hooked a little bit sooner than you, I think. Yeah, I guess it grabbed you a little sooner. And, you know, maybe that it's. Uh, also, I built it up uh, to you. Like, I was like, oh, this book's amazing. Whereas I was just going and reading it, having no preconceptions at all because no one had ever said anything about it to me. So. Yeah, uh, that was me. Probably that was you. Probably being like, "Oh, Matt says it's amazing." Then you're reading, you're like, "Why is, why does Matt say this is amazing?" So, um, Volume Two, The New Messiah, is definitely uh, pick, picks up though. So it definitely like I I was about I got about halfway and I'm like, okay, like are we going? And then it was like it was literally like a page turner turn in that, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yes. And uh, so jump jumping into that is. Um, the second volume is really cool because the second volume we, we got pre- we got to preface this though the so the second volume in between the first and second volume is 16 years <laughs> so oh yeah um, yeah that's kind of an important topic or point of this book is i don't know why i guess he just got busy doing stuff and probably you know this book wasn't like the biggest seller of all time for him yeah and then so. and then his then he actually got like pretty popular in in like a you know yeah Don't once he started like, doing yeah. civil war and ultimates that's what kicked him off they needed kick ass and wanted and all that stuff was going on in the background with movies and this netflix deal so finally once all that settled down he's like you know what i kind of want to finish that storyline and it's a good thing too because uh it changed the way that the story flowed i don't know if you read any of the back matter did you read anything I did, yeah. I read, I read his the his conversation with him and Peter between them. Yeah, and, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything yet because we haven't gone through it. But I'm just gonna say, like, it's kind of good, you know. Like, if you take a second, a break from something, and you come back to it, and you have all these new ideas, and it changes the way it flows. Because I think the biggest change that happens is probably one of the best changes in my mind. At by least. far, yeah. By and far. so, so, uh, yeah, the second volume starts, and, um. It is called this volume is called the new messiah so obviously we had the antichrist in the first one and now we got the new messiah and it starts off with a girl and she's in like a white room with a uh well he's an angel but we don't find that out a little until a little bit later but he's an angel and she's looking at a painting of jesus from from above i guess it's a salvador dolly painting where it looks it's like the crucifixion from god's point of view um and so he's telling her like you um are chosen and uh you know you're gonna be you're gonna have a baby um and people are gonna try to kill you but don't worry it's fine and uh and yeah it's gonna be god growing inside you so 
just so you know you're the new mary basically is what he's telling her and then she wakes up and it's 1974 in east harlem and um she's been having these dreams recently um for the last three days i guess right that's what it says um the same dream of meeting with this guy him saying you're gonna get pregnant um and it's gonna be like an immaculate conception just like mary and everything uh, we see her life a little bit where her dad's kind of like your average 70s gruff guy the mom seems pretty nice i think um they're both hispanic right so um what's her name again um uh, luciana yeah luciana so um that's right. I keep thinking, like, I know the daughter's name, but the, her name yeah, is Luciana. Um, so we see that, like, oh, she's dating boys and stuff. And people are trying to, like, ask her, like, hey, what's up with you and him? Like, have you gone out before? Like, as far as are you making out or are you, like, hot and heavy yet? And she's like, no. Because her friend is saying, well, if you're having all these dreams about getting pregnant, maybe it's just Catholic guilt. And because uh, you've been having sex. And she's like, no, I haven't been having sex. Like, we haven't done anything. Um and we see that the the boy she's dating is a black boy, which also like the dad isn't happy with uh, at the time. Um, but they just mentioned that a little bit, that there's some kind of like racist stuff there. Um, but she goes out with the boy uh, for like one of their, you know, little dates, going to see Young Frankenstein, which I would have loved to see in theaters. I'm sure you would too, <laughs> yeah. John. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, and then, so the next morning she wakes up and she's in school and she is throwing up and she's been throwing up uh, all morning. And it turns out that this is morning sickness and she is pregnant. And of course she's telling everybody, I didn't, we never had sex. I never had sex with him. I don't understand that. How could this happen? And no one believes her. Uh -huh, why girl, would they? Sure. Yeah. Why would they? <laughs> um, so the mom takes her to get an abortion and they go to the clinic and everybody's like, you know, don't worry about it. Here's some Valium. It'll relax you. It's a standard procedure. Watch Scooby-Doo while we do this thing. And, uh, and like, all of a sudden, she starts getting cramps right after they administer the Valium. And she's like, something's wrong. Like, I don't think the baby likes it or whatever. Like, <laughs> and this, keep in mind, this is, like, one day, right? But, like, I don't know what day the immaculate pregnancy, like, how how far along it is, right? Because, I mean, it's it's a God baby. So, technically... It could be like nine months at the moment. She doesn't look nine months pregnant or anything, but apparently whatever's inside of her is rejecting the Valium. And then uh, all of a sudden the TV kind of explodes as she's in more and more pain. And then the doctor who's supposed to perform the abortion all of a sudden is like, oh my God, I got like a bad headache. And then he sits down and he's like, nurse, my eyes don't feel right. Is something wrong with them? It's really hard to focus. And then he looks at her and his eyes start bleeding like... Like they're just broken, basically. Like God broke his eyes. <laughs> so, so, um, like someone comes and sits him down and says, Hey, like this has never happened. This is super weird. We're so sorry, but like we could schedule another appointment. And, uh, <laughs> and then it's we so weird you came here and like the TV in your room blew up. And then your doctor, his eyes just started bleeding. I yeah, so you know, weird, what the fuck? Come right? back another day. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> yeah. And, but we also see. And apparently everybody's got nurses and that's like their secret underground, you know, uh, like spy network is nurses because Jody's had a nurse, right? That's what like alerted him to what's going on. And now there's a nurse, another nurse who is uh, phoning someone. We don't know who uh, to kind of tell them this is a weird thing going on. Um, so the nice thing about uh, her boyfriend, which what's his name again? I don't remember what his name was. Eddie. Eddie. So, yeah. Uh, is Eddie is such a nice guy that he believes her. He's like, you know what? I'm going to believe that you're not actually pregnant from anything. I, I really liked his response here because uh, he, he, he was a little like freaked out at first, but then he's like, you know what? I like the story of Mary and Joseph in the Bible, and I, I really like you. Let's do this. Like, just super casual about it. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, he, he, you know, sticks by her side. Um, and then she, she's going to school one, like, I guess, you know, soon after that. And, uh, before she gets on the bus, all of a sudden the angel comes up to her and is like, oh, we must discuss some things. And basically he tells her that he tells her everything. The antichrist is going to be born. You know, they're walking through New York and he's like, see those towers right there. They're going to come down in 2001 and there's, you know, they're going to be hit by planes and that's going to be like one of the kickoffs of the antichrist and everything. So like, 
Um, he tells her that like there's going to be a one world government and a microchip thing happening and like a social credit score and all this shit going on. So um, actually some really scary stuff that he's bringing up. I was like, yeah. wait a second. I'm not a believer, but he's talking a lot of sense right now with a lot of shit going on. <laughs> so, um, But yeah, so uh, he tells her like, this is what's going on. And also like we, like the Antichrist has their people and we have our own people and we've built uh, a thing that's going to, like you need to go with our people and they'll protect you the whole time. Yeah. So this angel is just telling her everything that's going to happen uh, in the next 50 years. And she's saying, you know, you have to keep the baby safe and, or he's saying you have to keep the baby safe to her. And that uh, in 50 years, it's going to go down and basically they're going to meet in a place called, what is it? In the, Mag- Megadona? Megado? Yeah. Megado, I think. Or Megada. I'm trying to remember. How you Something like that. We'll, find, we'll see it later, but there's some sp- specific place in uh, like Jerusalem or the Middle East where they're supposed to meet. Um, and then she asks like, oh, what about my mom and dad? And he's like, I'm sorry, Lucina, like your parents are already dead. And it turns out government agents have found her and probably from that nurse um, earlier, I think is what they're assuming or we're supposed to assume is that the nurse found out about it uh, and sent you know, they're told her superiors and the superiors sent in the SWAT team to go uh, kill the parents and her, but they kill the parents. We see the, the guy with the cowboy hat is there. What's his name again? It's like uh, Ezekiel. No, no, no. no, no. The, sorry. That's, that's, that's the angel. Place. Yeah. Uh, Mr. All- Allerdice. Yeah. Allerdice. That's right. So Allerdice is like this, uh, this cowboy looking guy. And we saw him earlier in the first volume when we found out that Jody is the antichrist. So, so um, he's working for Jody, obviously. So, uh, so yeah, uh, she takes the angel's information and goes down to Texas with her boyfriend with uh, yeah, with Eddie, her boyfriend. And uh, yeah, we see that where they're going is Waco. Now, (laughs) if you know anything about Waco, and you can kind of put two and two together with the SWAT team that just burst into her parents' room and um, and also the events that uh, the angel showed her that are going to happen. Well, there's a big event that happens in the mid-90s in Waco. So I was automatically, like, this part, for sure, I was like, what the fuck? Like, they're going to they're gonna tie Waco into this? I was already shocked when they tied 9-11 into it. But, yeah. like, when they tie Waco into this, I was like, holy fuck. So... Uh, did you feel that too? Was this where you got like, oh, okay, like I'm into it? Yeah, this is about because yeah, because they they get there and I see it's a compound and I was like, wait a minute, a, a compound, compound in Waco? <laughs> <laughs> wait a second, I've heard of this story before. <laughs> so yeah, we go to this compound in Waco and it's you know it's fenced off. Uh, it's there's a bunch of people who kneel down in front of her and Eddie and say like, oh my queen, you know they're they're very very much into this whole thing. Uh, and the, the head guy's name is Ezekiel that runs this place, I guess, right? That's yeah. what I'm supposed to get from that. So um, she has the baby there. Uh, they named the baby Catalina. And they raise her in this place, right? So um, we see, like, once she grows up, the mom grows up. Now Catalina is, what, like 13 now or something? I don't remember how long it takes in between. I think she's supposed to be like 13, 14. I, I do want to say, too, I like the the showing kind of the difference, it, you know, that uh, the Antichrist grew up and it was pretty like nice hometown kind of thing. Yeah. And then where uh, Catalina now, they're showing her growing up in this compound of yeah. like very like culty, like yeah. strict, strict yeah. religious upbringing. Like, yeah, every, but, very... but also like everybody has to listen to her because she's the Messiah. So mm-hmm. like if she says jump, they begin to jump and shit. So like, but, but also she's being taught in Sunday school, like under, underneath the Capitol, there's like a new, a Luciferian, you know, underground, it's like pizza gate or some shit, right? Like it's yeah. <laughs> very much like that, where they're like all this stuff. If you look at, you know, the Pentagon from above, it's actually a pentagram and everybody's standing on it. And even though not everybody is involved in this satanic stuff, uh, they're still serving it because they're in these halls with these, you know, Lucifer people. And so, um, so yeah, like basically, and we also see like kids shooting rifles and stuff, practicing for 
the Armageddon and it's pretty normal. And I like how polite they are. They're like, oh, is it time for dinner? All right, let me just finish the last couple of my rounds and we'll be inside. And that is how you write gun safety, all right? They, they, uh, they're all <laughs> doing everything proper. So, so uh, anyway, so we yeah, the mom is grown up now. Uh, oh, you know, I believe the I believe she's supposed to be older than Jody was because Jody was twelve when we ran into him, and I think she's supposed to be eighteen, because I'll later be on when she leaves, teenager. yeah, she leaves and she says like when I turned eighteen. So, um, so yeah, we see that um, the mom is walking looking for Catalina, her daughter, and she can't find her on the compound. But then someone in the compound says, "Oh, I saw her go outside of the fence." So then she follows uh, outside the fence and finds Catalina smoking and uh, reading books, which, oh my God, secular books. And she's also listening to rock music, uh, rock and or roll. As <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so she's doing what she's not supposed to be doing. Um, and she's just being rebellious. She's, you know, she's a teenager who's been raised in a very sheltered life and she doesn't, and she doesn't believe any of this. She's like, mom, do you actually believe any of this shit? Um, she's oh, she says in three weeks she's gonna turn 18. So she's almost 18 at this moment. And um, and yeah, so she's like, I don't believe any of this shit. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, if you look and read stuff from from older civilizations, there's you know other myths like Jesus, where someone's walking on water or people being raised from the dead, things like that. Um, so like, why do you think? that I'm the Messiah. Like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't show any signs of being the Messiah. And also like, mom, why can't you just say you got pregnant from Eddie and ran away from home? Like, why is that so fucking hard? Like you've, you've been completely brainwashed by these people. Um, and the mom will not budge on this. She's like, no, like, this is all true. You don't understand. You'll understand when you start getting powers. And Catalina's is like, you're fucking crazy. So one night uh catalina like i guess I, I i don't know if this is the same night but basically the alarm goes off on accident um when someone comes into the compound to show them this is like the new microchip we've been talking about like like it's a spy i think from that's at one of the luciferian corporations and he comes to the compound and he says hey like i have like the, the microchip that's going to be implanted in everybody um, and it's pretty big for like a microchip because it's like the 90s, but he's like, this is just a prototype in like 20, 30, 30 20, or was it 20, uh, 2023, I think is when it's supposed to happen. Uh, like, or around there, like everybody's going to get these, but they're going to be way smaller and they're going to be injected and it's going to be RF, R, RIFD chip or whatever, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah. And, uh, and like everybody's going to need one in order to buy anything, to go anywhere. There's going to be checkpoints and, covid status on it and all this shit so um i don't think they said covid status in this one because this is right this one came out right before covid but in the third book they talk about how they've implemented how this just worked out well that covid happened and we've implemented COVID this you know bad. yeah covid status on it so um yeah i thought that was a nice little touch yeah so it, it just worked out that this book happened to come out at the right time for that stuff to fit in but uh but yeah so the alarm goes off while this guy's here and it turns out to be a false alarm but that's it. That's Catalina's had enough. She's like, look, this is fucking bullshit. Like, you guys are crazy. Like, I don't want to hide anymore. So she decides she's going to run away. And it's not very hard for her to run away. I guess at any point she could have just walked up to the gate and told the person to move. And they would because she's Jesus. Um, so uh, the person moves because she says move. And, <laughs> and also tells her, like, don't alert anybody. And uh, she walks away and, and runs away, calls her mom from a pay phone the next morning and says, like, like, don't worry, mom. I'm OK, but this is bullshit. Like, I'm getting away from there and you should, too. Um, I'm going to go live a normal life. And the mom is like, whatever, just hang up the fucking phone, because the mom, you know, we've seen that the people are super paranoid. And you know, it, it's interesting because, you know, we're watching this and we're, we know that this shit is happening, right? Like the actual yeah. antichrist is happening. We see in the first volume. So like, even though she's not believing, we know that it's all real. So it's an interesting view of art from our point where like, if, if we, if we didn't know, we'd be like, yeah, she's totally rational and making perfect sense. Why would she believe any of this stuff? It's super weird. And then 
but like we know it's it's real so it's it's like just shut up like don't answer the phone <laughs> or don't call anybody from a pay phone they're gonna hear you um so the mom is saying that basically like don't you know hang up the phone right now don't say anything um and then right when she hangs up the phone the dad eddie says like oh is she is she okay did she give away anything that might lead them to her and she's like i don't know and then we see someone actually it's the the cowboy guy the the dude in the cowboy hat he says we got him you know so like um he was listening in on the payphone conversation uh with with a you know uh, his whole network or whatever and yeah. we see that she is about to go to los angeles uh from some nice guy that i guess hitchhiker picked her up or whatever so she was hitchhiking and he picked her up um, well you could still hitchhike around that time so sure i mean that, that wouldn't be <laughs> weird at all not weird at all not so uh what luciana the mom decides to do is she goes all commando she's like fuck it i'm gonna go get her i'm gonna bring her back but also she's had a vision this last night she dreamed the angel came to her again and said that this trip of of catalina going to at los angeles is gonna manifest her powers so uh once you know the mom comes back or gets her in los angeles she will have she will see that she truly is the messiah and catalina will believe and she'll get power so that is what she goes there to do she tells everybody goodbye leaves eddie and everybody else there and one thing i love is that she shows up in la and she's got like a gun strapped to her hip the whole time i'm like how the fuck is that like no everybody in la if you started walking down the street with like commando pants on with like she's wearing like army green everything like a tank top and commando pants and then she also has like just a 45 strapped to her belt like open carry it's like that that would not fly in los angeles man <laughs> but maybe she's being protected by god i don't know you know that might be what it's supposed to be um so we see outside of the as she leaves we see outside of the compound the uh the what the cowboy guy is waiting with all his people and they're like we're gonna we're gonna get them now and uh yeah then we cut to los angeles and it's been a couple weeks i guess or maybe a couple months I don't know how long it's been. Does it say how long it's been? Yeah, it's been about three weeks. Okay, yeah. So three weeks. Uh, she, uh, Catalina, has, is is having sex or just had sex with the guy that picked her up. His name is Dylan. Um, and he's been living with her for a, for t- these last two weeks, she said, or they've been dating for the last two weeks. Um, and, yeah, they seem to be having a pretty good time. Uh, she actually conf- confesses to him, you know, like, I, I had this fucked up situation like growing up and it's really interesting hearing what uh like when she tells him how she grew up and how she was in this crazy cult it says like he cried you know when he heard it like how, that's how much it emotionally affected him um, which i was like wow that's fucked up that's that's pretty like impactful as far as like a visual right we don't see him cry but like just the the hearing of it um and then so they decide like yeah we're gonna like party basically live it up get you out of, get you away from that mindset we're gonna we're gonna give you everything kind of like rumspring or something like we're gonna give you everything you missed out in your childhood um so they go to parties they go to raves and have fun and meet new people and like every time she hangs out with his friends they're always like oh my god you didn't know you didn't watch robocop growing up you don't know what indiana jones is so it's kind of like one of those um like everybody loves it and she's not annoyed by these questions either she's like loving it because it's kind of funny to her that you know she doesn't know any of this pop culture shit that she didn't grow up with um so in the diner while they're all hanging out the mom shows up and is like catalina we gotta go like leave these people you want to live exactly <laughs> that's basically it's like she's linda hamilton right now like, like full, for sure um and dylan stands up and is like hey like i don't think you know she she should go with you like i don't want to get in the middle of a family dispute but like no she's not going to go and or it's up to her to go if she wants to go and the mom doesn't hesitate at all she just pulls the gun out and is like i'll fucking shoot you like i don't give a fuck she is the messiah we need to get her out of here and so uh she runs away with the daughter uh well actually what happens really is she turns on the tv she or she tells uh, cause, cause Catalina doesn't want to go. So she's like, no, you don't understand. We have to go now. They're going to find us. Look at what they did to everybody else. And she turns the TV on in the diner and we see that Waco has just happened. If you don't know what happened at Waco in the nineties, in 19, I think it was 95 or 96. Yeah. Uh, the FBI and the ATF raided a compound 
of a cult, a religious sect in Waco, Texas, and it ended up getting burnt to the ground and everybody inside died. So, um, on- yeah, they got they got out some some of the kids were were let go uh, beforehand as part of the, the standoff. How long was the standoff? Three months. It was a while. It was a long while. I it was it was a long while. while. But oh yeah, long standoff. But eventually, yeah, they it caught caught fire because the ATF launched uh, tear gas in the in there and it set it set the curtains yeah. on fire or something. That's what the official yeah. story is. It could be something else if you uh, dabble in conspiracy a little bit, but uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Why so would she, the government ever do anything bad? No, not at all. So uh, so yeah, we see that. Uh, on the news, she, you know, Catalina is watching this and she's like, oh my God, like everybody I know is dead. Dad is dead. Like her, you know, he- earthly father, they call him. Um, and so, and this part I really liked and it's kind of interesting because he does set it up, but it's subtle. So Dylan, you know, he sees her and she's like, I have to go. And he's like, I know you take my car. And then she's like, but you believe in this? And, he, and he's like, from the moment I met you, I believe this. And I, I think what it is, is like her, she has an aura or she has a, like a goodness in her that attracts good people to her. Yeah. Something like that. Like, like you can see that um, he was horrified by how she grew up, like in the compound and stuff. But I think it's still set up that like, he's so enamored with her and he's so into her that like, kind of like whatever she's down to do, like whatever her, her decision is, he's, he's for it. So um and you know it would make sense that he would believe her like that he would believe that she's god even if she doesn't kind of thing like that's yeah that's how much her like aura is or whatever like her uh her goodness is projecting so the mom and her leave in his car they're going down to san diego i can't remember why they're going to san diego i think it might be like some kind of bunker or something or maybe the angel told her i think that's what happened the yeah angel- i think it was the, yeah to go to san diego there oh it was to go to to the um the docks in san diego yeah there's right like they're gonna take the boat a boat or something i don't know but um so of course there's a shit ton of traffic and it turns out there's a traffic because the government has set up roadblocks to find them and we see and i at first i was like really the government is already like on to her but we see that the cowboys there he's actually um like part of like he's basically the government is working with lucifer luciferian agents right so yeah um so they're on his side so that makes sense that they've come to this point and they're um basically they they surround them and say like give up give her up like there's no way she hasn't even manifested her powers yet so like there's no way that she's gonna win this our guy has been around already we've been working with him he's like tip top of his powers so there's no way that you're gonna win now um and then he says something about like how her dad was stupid her earthly dad because his like he tried to save Ezekiel, the leader, but they just shot both of them. And it's like, why did he jump in front of him and like waste his life? We were going to kill him anyway, but like, it was stupid to like be a martyr or whatever. And, and just jump in front of Ezekiel for no reason. Um, so right, uh, right when they're about to arrest them, uh, like the, the, the Texas guy says all yours to the agents, a bolt of lightning comes down and kills everybody that's right next to them, all the agents. And, uh, <laughs> and the, the cowboy's like what the hell and then basically right there all of her powers manifest right after that so god sent the first bolt is what i understand and then after that like the mom is like what'd you do and and catalina's like i didn't do anything and then when the the texas guy says or when the cowboy says get him she's like Poof, and does bolt lightning bolts again and strikes a bunch of other people all, all other agents and she's like but that one was was me so she manifests immediately right when this happens, um, her powers do. Then she makes everybody that's got weapons, all the uh, the agents, she makes them point their guns at their faces, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. And then she makes them all kill themselves <laughs> on the bridge. And like the cowboy's like, no, you got to give me a chance to repent, don't you? And then you just see like, boom, 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 boom. Like everybody just fucking kills themselves. Uh, so they they leave. And they end up uh, getting out of there on a boat. And yeah, that was like pretty much it. I guess she just sends, um, does she say goodbye to her mom? Like, does her mom leave? I can't remember what exactly she, happened. I, I think they have a, they have kind of like a, um, a, heart a, to heart. Yeah, a heart to heart. And then, yeah, she says her goodbye. Cause she's that. Yeah, Cause then she doesn't see her mom for a while. Cause she goes out into the world. 
Yes, that's right. That's right. That's what happened. So um, I, I, I do want to say I really I think, like I said, it was kind of in the middle there. And then specifically the ending of this one that really got me because I because then it made me like do that comparison of being like, again, the so the. Uh, the um, the Antichrist had, had a nice upbringing and kind of did some good things, and then did all the then turn you know was like oh I'm the Antichrist and you know he's been doing whatever bad, bad stuff, stuff for all this yeah, time right. yeah and then uh, she you know she doesn't believe that she's uh, the second coming of Jesus and then she you know it finally dawns on her and she gets her powers and the first thing she did is, is like Just murder everybody <laughs> yeah turn the guns on yourself and kill yourself yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like, that's, oh my that's God. one of the things i liked about this book is i could never tell where it was going like especially by the second book right like the first one the the end is the shock because you think you know where it's going because you're like oh this is the second coming of christ it's kind of by the numbers and then at the end you're like oh it's the antichrist that's a twist and then when this one happens it's a twist on even what you think the Messiah is going to be. And then the whole like Waco tie-in was like, what the fuck? I can't believe they did that. Um, yeah. That just made me like get even more into it when I was like, oh shit, I got to find out what happens next. So book three starts. Uh, and this one, like we said, is called Revelation. And uh, we get a little intro about how Lucifer became, uh, or fell from heaven, I guess. And we see like how he fell from heaven. And yeah, if you don't um, know the biblical story. Yeah, basically, he was just like, uh, why do you like these humans more than us? Uh, and he kind of challenged God, and then God was like, go fuck yourself. And so sent him down into the pits of hell uh, for challenging God. Then one thing I like is that they show God, like, crafting humans. And he's just like a painter. He looks like Leonardo da Vinci. And he's just like, <laughs> da, 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 da. And he's like chiseling away at, you know, the male form and a, and a woman in the Garden of Eden. And like, we just see the kind of whole story. Then they talk about how the Luciferian people have been rising up ever since, you know, the first Jesus came and like they see, they show in the, in like the, the recent years, there's been many people coming up that are like holy people that have been assassinated by the Luciferian cult. And we see Martin Luther King, JFK, uh, is it RFK or no, I don't, I don't know who the other people, there's Gandhi, Malcolm X, and there's someone in the middle. I don't know who that's supposed to be. Maybe it's just JFK I again. Maybe I it was JFK or I figured RFK because you know both of them. Right, it could have been either one, yeah, at that point. But uh, but yeah, JFK for sure because there's one of him in the Cadillac or whatever the the limo, and then there's there's another one of someone that looks like JFK, but you don't see his face, so it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, but basically, it's just like this is happening, um, and then we find out that this story that's being told to us is actually the nice little bedtime story that uh, the Antichrist, the president of the United States, is telling his children who are twins. Um, and they're like, really, dad, the, all this is real. And he's like, yeah, this is exactly what's going to happen. And, um, and yeah, like, it's just like him. It's just, it's a weird juxtaposition to see like a nice guy who's reading a bedtime story to his kids. And it turns out it's like the story of Lucifer and how the antichrist is going to rise. So, um, that's, that's nice. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we just see like how, his day-to-day -day is as president. So he's going around. We see his mom is still in the picture. She's older. But that was one thing from the first book. They said, like, the, the cult said, you know, you can you can visit him anytime he wants you to visit. So as long as he wants you to visit, which probably won't be that long, they're hoping that he breaks all ties with people, um, with, like, the sentimental side of his growing up, that, uh, you know, anytime he wants, he can visit her or she can visit him. But it seems like he's wanted her in his life for the most part because she's still here, which is something I don't think they planned on. Um, and so he's giving a speech to all these Satanists about how everything's going to plan and it's going splendidly. The, all their, you know, satanic era is rising and everything. And and then he looks down at his watch and he says 846 a.m. September 11th. And we see that, yeah, this is 9-11 and he's giving a speech right before the Twin Towers get attacked. And right when they get you know hit by the first plane confetti falls from the ceiling and he says you're looking at a piece of history and says cheers and then a big orgy starts uh, everybody starts getting naked inside the building and the building that they're in is directly across from the world trade center so they're watching it explode like 
they're like almost like yeah. Fight Club, like the end of Fight Club, when they're in that building and they're watching the other buildings explode in the city. It's super fucked up. And I yeah. think he actually, the artist actually used the actual explosion footage from because it looks like a photo almost. Um, yeah. Like the building looks like it's drawn, but the photo of the explosion looks like it's real explosion. So that super fucked up. Um, but yeah, so uh, then we cut to a few weeks later. So September 11th, you know, I guess he's not the president yet, right? He's just, or no, he is the president, right? No, no, no. He's, I don't think he's the pre- president here. I think this is, that's he, right. He's, that, the he- he's the head of like a, a he, he's been getting influenced over all of this time, and he's and a you know, he's a Bill Gates, Elon Musk type right now. Exactly. So, so the and, the president scene, you know, we did a flashback. I guess is what happened from there. So. Yeah, it, it, yeah, we know he ha- becomes president because it's the ultimate seat of power. Right. Um, but but basically, he's been gaining influence and power throughout all of this time. Like you said, Bill Gates, uh, Elon Musk type. He's uh, like he's like a tech billionaire. Um, I don't remember exactly what what it's he uh microchips why not we'll right, yeah microchips or something yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah but one one of the conversations he was having on his way up to that 911 speech uh one of the guys was saying like look if you're going to run for president at some point you have to get married and have kids and he's like right whatever just get me a wife with big tits like that's all I care about <laughs> and so um they go to someone who's like kind of like supposed to be like a Britney Spears type of person I guess or like well, someone that was in the Disney you know, club when they were kids and then is now turning 18 and is having a hard time transitioning into that, like adult, you know, adults pop star versus what she was as a child in the Disney shows or whatever. So um, one of these Luciferian people go up to her and say like, we can help you out. All you got to do is, uh, you know, marry our guy and we will also help your image and everything. So she goes full, She's basically like, where, sign me up. Like, where's the dotted line? I'll put my name on it. And she just goes full, like, I guess you'd call like, like, you know, like when Britney Spears or Christina Aguilera were trying to get edgy, you know, in, at the, you know, in their early 20s in their career. And there's all these fashion uh, magazines and stuff that show her being edgy with like Bibles with upside down crosses and goat's heads, you know, holding in front of her naked body. Scary like hour, skin tight leather, stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, and then we see the true like dotted line signing agreement she made. She is after this, after like they put, you know, they, they uh, do their end of the bargain. She is brought down into an underground castle area or whatever, like a dungeon where there's all these you know people in robes and she's naked and she is brought forth. Uh, she hears babies crying and they're like, don't worry, that'll be for the feast later. We're going to like eat them. Um, and then she brought forward onto a table. And we see the president or the, uh, the, you know, Jody, uh, the grown up Jody, and he's standing there naked as well. And basically they're going to fuck on this table in front of everybody while he's like, uh, I guess, possessed by demons is what I got from it. Either that, or they're summoning demons to join the, the orgy or something with her. Um, but basically it's like all of hell is watching them fuck. And, uh, yeah, they're totally cool with that. And they begin sacrificing babies as the demons are brought forth. And then, um the woman says hail satan for i truly do and then it's like jesus christ like <laughs> yeah it was very like very quickly like okay like sign me up like they show her yeah going like oh yeah getting like you know risque and naughty and then literally like yeah hail satan the next thing is like eyes wide shut but like on steroids it's like <laughs> eyes okay, wide shut with satan yeah, hail, now hail satan and get over there and <laughs> Yeah, and fuck while these babies are being murdered in front of you. Yeah. So uh, adrenochrome. They don't. They don't say adrenochrome in this. I'll, yeah. I'll give that. But they, they do. They do suck the, the blood of the babies. Yes. And so uh, they're sucking babies, people. Uh, <laughs> so uh, then we cut to now, and we see that they're married now, and they have two children, like we saw earlier. Um, and now the so the, like we said that he is a tech conglomerate person or whatever. So. They say that there's a supercomputer that will be uh, they will be turning on soon that they're building called the Beast, and everybody's like social credit score and social medias will be run off of it, and all this kind of stuff. So basically, the idea is, um, if they can get everybody to have this chip in them, they can block the the second coming. So even if God comes, 
and you know the horn sounds and angels come and jesus comes back um there's nothing they're going to be able to do because satan is going to have this chip in them and that's going to basically make it so that god automatically loses because uh, the souls won't be able to be saved yep they will have been enslaved and you know that's that's up they can't do anything about it exactly and we also see jody is there and he seems kind of aloof about all this um i mean at this point he's not like fully jaded but he's definitely not like super um into everything you know like that's going on with like you could tell he's into it but he's, i don't know maybe it's because he grew up in it he's kind of like bored I, I guess kind of what it's or he's having second thoughts that's how it kind of felt to me is kind of like he's been doing all this bad stuff all this time and now we're like, i guess we're getting closer and closer but he's like as we get closer and closer he's like man like i just want to like get it over with this point or like do something else this is like you know this is not you know this seems like more than i not necessarily more than he signed up for but like just more than he wants to handle anymore right and so we see that now he's he's the president um because like we're cutting back in time between like when he was uh just a conglomerate you know or just a tech guy then he's like you know the president so now he's giving an, another presidential speech and he's talking about uh how there's a fight with russia and you know this culture war is going on and the only thing he cares about is building it back better and tackling the climate emergency and all this stuff so we're seeing that people love him they're big fans of him then we cut to a hospital room and we see Catalina she is full grown and the hospital room is her mom's her mom is dying and uh basically Catalina has been gone for a long time she's been visiting all around the world and she's been seeing a lot of stuff and the way she's done that is she's been posing as different people because uh the mom was saying like oh how did you not get caught and she's like well I I mean I just put like a basically like I anybody everybody looks I look like I want to to anybody so um she was saying that like like even like the nurse comes in while she's talking and the nurse says oh ma'am you have to leave and then she looks at the at catalina and catalina looks like the doctor to her now and she's like oh i'm sorry doctor like continue and then leaves so then she says like oh i wandered the the earth as an old lady and a kid in rwanda that got killed and a prisoner a prisoner on death row and a migrant who was clinging to a dinghy so basically she just inhabited the body of like all the lowest of the low people you'll say kind of on earth all the poorest people and uh she wasn't really happy with uh what she saw with, of, of humanity kind of thing uh but the mom is like no you have to like you have to fight the antichrist we have to beat what's going to happen so i liked this a lot i thought catalina having like a kind of a not a crisis of faith but like a like like she's not here to save everybody she's here to judge everybody kind of thing like she's she's hit that point you know yeah i, li I like that too because her mom was basically like did you get enough like did you connect with enough followers that you'll have like your army basically to to fight against you know the, the antichrist and his army and she's like no i don't need an army because i didn't find enough people that i even like even like felt worth saving technically like so uh i'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead go ahead and uh end all end all this uh end all this soon we're gonna ha have judgment day come and everybody will be judged yes so issue two starts and basically the the luciferian cult is like hey we're six months ahead of schedule we could do this early and hopefully that'll catch the uh the messiah off off balance too like catch it by surprise um so he's like the president's like ugh, fine and it, like i said it seems like he's not fully into this in fact one thing he's doing all the time is hanging out with his kids and spending time with them a lot it seems like he really loves his kids a lot for someone who's supposed to be the antichrist um and so he says like okay like i guess you know let me go to my office and we'll start you know talking to people and figure out what's going on and so he goes to his office he calls his kids in there and then when um and then the mom shows up to the white house and the wife his wife is like why are you here because she's not a big fan of the mom and the mom's like no i want to see him i got to talk to him <laughs> i like this line a lot she says a man can have a hundred wives but he only has one mother <laughs> so uh so yeah it's, the mom is still in his life 
Um, and then when she goes into the Oval Office, or I guess wherever office he was, um, we see that the kids are playing in there, and they say, hi, Grandma, Dad disappeared. We don't know where he went, but he went AWOL. Turns out he went back to Peora, Illinois, back to his hometown, and he actually got in contact with the preacher who's still alive. Yeah, he's very old at this point. <laughs> yeah, and the preacher is like, Mr. President, like he goes to meet him on like a swing set and they sit next to each other. And uh, I thought this was a really like touching scene because um, basically he he tells the pastor like, hey, like I'm the Antichrist. Like we were all wrong about what I was like. I did. I've done a lot of bad shit, too. Um, and like, I don't think I can handle this anymore. Like they say I got to fight the Messiah and everything, but. I don't know, you know, like, I'm not sure if I want to do any of this stuff. Um, and then the pastor says, like, look, um, I know that you're supposed to be the the Antichrist, but I think you're like a good kid, basically. Like, like, I've known you for a really long time. And I like you sell, saving my dog and you healing people. I saw something in you that was beyond just you being an evil antichrist kid no matter what you've done in the past in the you know since then and also because like you were brought up you were raised to be like this horrible person so like before that you were a nice kid and it was great so obviously that evil is not in you all the time so uh jody's like okay I, would, will you hear my confession so he actually confesses to the the preacher or the pastor or what are they called priests i guess the priests i don't priest, know pastor the Piece of priest pastor, you're he's Catholic. Right. He's Catholic. I don't know what the fuck they call him. So, um, so yeah, uh, Monsignor. Monsignor, yo, Monsignor. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You could do any of them. There, <laughs> it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he uh, he confesses to, or he does confession with the priest, and then uh, the father blesses him or whatever. And if, I like how the he tells they don't say what he says, but the father's eyes are like, oh my good God, after he hears the confession. I thought that was funny. Um but he says, uh, you know, are you disgusted with me, father? And the father says, your sins are not for me to judge, but if you're sorry for all these things you've done, like really sorry, you really do have God's forgiveness. And when they got you they got you when you were a little boy and you didn't know what you were doing, you just need to forgive yourself and know that the Lord has a plan for us all. So I thought that was like a really nice kind of like touching thing to happen. Uh, For sure. I, I really liked it. It made me think of the the cat from uh, Rick and Morty. And they're like, he's like, yeah, I, who, you know, why do you talk? And he's like, oh, it's crazy. And then he, they, they, you know, Rick looks into, he's like, oh my God, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the priest is like, you can't like, yeah, you've done bad things, but like, I know you were a good kid. And then he, the, they do the confession. And then he says so, like, so, and it's like, I want to confess. Okay. They sit down in the church, confess, and the next one's like, okay, that's my confession. This is the wide eyed, like, Lord Holy Almighty. Holy fuck. Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> a lot of bad stuff. I mean, I'm sure he told them, I fucked my current wife on a altar to Satan or whatever, like, you know, while they yeah. killed babies. Like, that's a pretty big confession, I would think. I helped cause 9 11. I, you know, <laughs> yeah, we, we rejoiced when 9 11 happened. That was part of the plan. Um, yeah. So yeah. it, it was it was fun, but I but again, like like you said, I I think it's interesting that he's like, okay, that's a lot of terrible shit, like probably the worst shit I've ever heard, like really seriously, the worst shit I've ever heard. But okay, it's the worst shit I've ever heard. But anyway, <laughs> you can you, you know if you really are saying that you are sorry for that, that hey, it's gonna be all right, kid. Like deep down, like you know. God has a plan for everyone. And, you know, that means that includes you. Yes. <laughs> so right at that moment, uh, the government shows up because they find him and they take him back into place. We also see that they like handcuff the priest. So hopefully the priest is okay. They don't really say what happens, but uh, uh, they smash him down the ground. Those cops. Yeah. That they, 80 year old man. They do. I don't think they have a problem <laughs> with that, John. So at the same time that uh, Jody was doubting himself and kind of having second thoughts about things, uh, we get we see we see Catalina, and she goes to Rome. She goes to the Vatican, and uh, she walks in and she's like, "I don't like this place that much. <laughs> I don't think this is very good." Now, John, uh, John was raised Catholic, so I was not. So this this was I mean this was hard hitting. This was like oh shit, but like 
to you, was this any more hard hitting because you're Catholic? Oh yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I love this. She went in and she's like, "Huh, there's a lot of ridges and uh, money built into this place, huh?" Like, uh, definitely uh, not stuff I talked about in the book. <laughs> yeah, and all the guards are like, "What are you talking about? Like, leave, homeless person. We don't like you." Uh, and I like that she's like, you know, like every all of these like carvings and special things you have in here. If you sold any of them, you could feed like a whole village for a day in Africa or, or like a year in Africa. So like. Yeah. Uh, she she demands to see the Pope and and I'm not sure if I think she like tells them tells them like makes them you know because their their eyes go white when she says you know I want to talk to him basically so um, it seems like uh, the Pope comes down from the stairs and he's like why didn't you throw them out and and and, and everybody's like because she told us not to <laughs> and she said she she insisted on seeing you so uh, so then when he comes down the stairs. Uh, we see all the cardinals and bishops and everything kneeling before her, praying. Uh, and then, like, the, there's a light, of course, coming from the ceiling down on her, like she is revealed Aww. to be. The, yeah, exactly. Like she's revealed to be the Christ. Uh, and the Pope's like, "What's going on here? Who is this woman?" <laughs> and she's like, "Don't you recognize me? <laughs> like, like you think you spent all this time studying me? You 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 know who I am? Unless you are a, a bad motherfucker." And so. She talks about how she like went to Wall Street and melted the bull, like the bull statue that's there for the bulls and the bears. Um, and then she went to like um, all these other areas where they have like false idols kind of thing. She went to the EU and I guess tore down the Tower of Babel, as she calls it, which I was like, oh, shit, that's fucking badass. And then <laughs> and then she proceeds to make the entire Vatican collapse on itself and kills everybody as she tells them, you fucking suck. Uh, you're terrible. And also, like they mentioned earlier, that the Catholic, uh, the Catholic Church is on their side, like the Luciferians do. So, like, he's probably in on it anyway. Um, maybe not all the cardinals that she kills right there, but they're going to heaven, so it's fine. Um, yeah, so that was pretty f fucking cool, I thought. And then she like looks up because she knows a satellite is watching. As the Luciferian people that are watching everywhere on the globe with their satellites, it's like we got her. She's in the Vatican something's wrong and like she looks up and then there's like a photograph of her face so now they know what she looks like because like she said earlier she's been going around the earth and they haven't been able to find her because she's been like putting a, an illusion spell or whatever on herself you know so, that, so no one knows what she looks like um, yeah she's different everywhere yeah so she's like you know what uh i'm gonna make this happen earlier than it was supposed to which is fine because it's actually happening earlier. Like, like the Antichrist is about to launch earlier than they were supposed to as well. And, and she says, I'll be waiting. She says, tell to the, to the Pope, he doesn't die. She says, tell, tell them, tell the president, he has 24 hours. I'll be waiting in the city of Megiddo. And so uh, she goes over there and that's where the, the world will end tomorrow. She says, as she walks out of the, the fallen Vatican and uh it's pretty fucking badass I, I thought that was like the most badass thing in this comic so far oh yeah as far as that goes then we get uh december 1969 issue three starts where we see the mother of jody is giving birth and it looks like she's about to or she's not into it is what's going on she was basically sold by her parents to this luciferian cult maybe she gets something like special about her that they want uh, that's why they wanted her to be the mother of the Antichrist. I'm not 100% sure why they picked her, but they did. Um, so she's in the middle of a pentagram. She's just given birth, and there's all these people in robes. And there's even a person, like, eating the placenta or something. Like, like it looks super fucked up, whatever's happening yeah. to the person who's helping her give birth. It's not a doctor. Let's put it that way. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, they're saying, like, you better fucking help this baby. If you don't, we'll just kill him and get you pregnant again until you do, you know, until you agree to go with us. Um, and so um, basically they tell her, her that, look, he needs to be raised by you. Um, we want him to be like so unknown that he's like just a Midwestern kid in the middle of nowhere. That's the plan, basically. And then once his powers manifest, then we'll like call for him. So, but you have to be a good mom or else like we're going to kill everybody you love and take everything away from your parents that they, you know, traded you for. And also we'll kill this baby too. Um, and so she decides, all right, I'll go along with it. She's not happy at first, but over the years, it seems that, you know, her love 
for her child definitely grew and was there the whole time right so um it also like if you think about if you think back when the first one was written it kind of puts a new light on everything she says in the first book you know when she's telling him about like you're special and all that shit you know yeah she basically makes it out to be like if i'm gonna be forced to mother i'm gonna mother the fuck out of this baby. yeah i'm gonna be the best goddamn <laughs> mother there is yeah and, and basically what it is is i'm gonna be the best mother there is to show him like this is good and they are evil you know like so like you choose what you want you know basically it's the iron giant you choose who you want to be you know so <laughs> you don't have to be a weapon uh so uh then we cut to pr present day where air force one is or the president's walking into air force one and they're saying like you know we're going we're going to medigo um or met megado 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 yeah yeah it's a hard word to say um and then all of a sudden there's a loud noise that sounds like the the wife says it sounds like whales in the sky and he's like oh that's the horns you know the angel horns the trumpets <laughs> oh yeah that's <laughs> just the trumpets of the, yeah. of the apocalypse the apocalypse is happening so you know we're everybody's coming back to be judged i liked this part a lot so if you don't know in the bible when the the trumpet sounds for the armageddon to start uh the dead will rise so the dead begin to rise and they're not all gross and everything necessarily they kind of look like just older you know they look like how they looked back in the day with their clothes they look maybe a little pale but they're not all like gross and rotted uh but like we see people from a hundred years ago rising they're all going to their family homes saying hi to everybody they've missed for so long i thought that was just like a cool touch like oh that's fun like that's nice <laughs> um and then everybody else is just staring up at the sky like waiting to see what's going to happen in Med megado and uh we see in megado Catalina is waiting on top of, I don't know, probably like some hill that makes that, you know, means something. Is that, is that supposed to be the hill that Jesus was crucified on or something? Or is that? I, I, yeah, I think so. It's the one that overlooks the, the field in, in, in where they're supposed to be the last battle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. Mount something, but. Sinai? It's Mount Sinai? Oh yeah. Mount Sinai. Yeah. yeah there you go. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Aha, <laughs> I feel <no>. bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, uh, she's waiting there and she sees air force one fly over and the best thing is he the, the plane flies over and he just appears in front of her so like he didn't even need to fly there i don't know why he needed to fly but <laughs> but like he just appears and he's like he can only there. teleport in a certain amount of maybe he has to have line of sight or something on it i don't know yeah he's like he has like nightcrawler <laughs> right so they are standing now looking at each other they're you know they're they're ready to square off <laughs> exactly and uh yeah this is definitely um what i was waiting for i was like what the fuck is gonna happen here is this gonna be like some epic battle like what's gonna happen and i fucking loved the way that this wraps up here because it doesn't go any way the any way i thought it would go um like i thought because mark miller is known for his like bombastic violence he's very like cinematic and visual with his stories and stuff if you've ever seen Wanted, or he's got he's a bit of an edge lord sometimes. So I thought this was going to go that way, and this does not at all. Basically, the Antichrist comes down and is like, "I don't want to fight. Like I don't want any of this. Something has changed in me. Basically, I've seen my children and how much I love them. My mother, who's always shown me love and everything, and my wife, who even though she's a pretty terrible person in what we've seen so far, she loves me a hundred percent." She's willing to die for me and my family. And because of that, like, I, th I think I've changed my mind about God and like those stupid ape humans he made, you know, I, I think I like them. I understand them now they have grown and they are more than just like useless, you know, things that God made. Um, and the funny thing is then Catalina says, well, that's weird. I disagree. I think they're horrible. I've walked this earth. I got treated like shit everywhere. I got like abused and, you know, horribly treated everywhere I went on the entire earth. Um, so basically I've got, you know, the four horsemen of the apocalypse waiting to just murder everybody. Um, they're just waiting for me to say yes. <laughs> and so um, this, we, we get a really cool moment where Jody's like, please, I'm begging you, like, forgive them. Like, in fact, forgive all of us, like, because like, I, and I think it's because he, you know, he asked for, 
uh, repentance. So he repented to the priest. So he's kind of like clean now, right? He hasn't done any new sins, I'm assuming. And uh, yeah. and so he says, like, I th- I think we don't have to fight. Like, we could just, like, you could forgive everybody and save everybody, you know? And uh, yeah, and not just, like, don't just say, like, I, we're not even asking for you to save all the humans with it. Save all of the fallen angels and yes. Satan and all of us from you know everything we've done yeah like basically everything would be redeemed you know like fully not just oh satan would lose in a battle and you know that's the end of him or whatever it's it's like no like everything's forgiven like all sin of all time even time before time you know like with lucifer so um he he says this and he and basically she forgives him she's like all you want is to be forgiven for your actions and he's like more than anything in the world we we are truly sorry and then she says then tell your father we've missed our friend our, our old friend tonight he'll be with us in paradise and at that when reading this page i was like holy shit like this is hitting hard and then we get a, a double page spread of <laughs> oh it's a funny spread but it's god like as you know leonardo da vinci looking and and like the most devilish looking satan you could possibly draw hugging like giving a big like hug it out you know um father and son making up you know prodigal son returns kind of thing and i just thought this was like so beautiful as an ending like i hadn't i did not think this was coming at all this that was going to be this nice and everything and i don't know it really touched me i was just like wow this was like a really solid way to end this story like you know it was just really good um and then we see why the change happened in case you hadn't picked up on it i mean he said like my mom and shit but this is where we see basically the mom his mom jody's mom getting back at the the luciferian cult who made her have him and raise him and stole her whole life from her she's like like you said i'm gonna i'm gonna mother the hell out of this child and so like literally (laughs) she's like i'm gonna they're, they're gonna tempt you with so many terrible things but i'm gonna teach you right from wrong and then we see um him like talking to his friend maggie a little bit later when he's older and he and she's asking him like are you ever scared because she he still thinks he's god at this point like the the messiah and she's like are you even scared when you read the bible jody when you see what will what you'll be up against in the apocalypse and he's like no because good always wins in the end maggie because that's what his mom taught him and so like and and then even with his children he's telling them what his mom told them or what his mom told him when he was growing up. So like, we're seeing that like, um, the mom has really influenced him throughout her whole life. And then that's, so that's the change that that's what caused the change over the time, right? Like he's, he was raised in this horrible cult uh, or like Luciferian cults for all of his life after a certain point. And then, but his mom has always been there. And then that's, what's kind of war on him through his whole life until eventually he's like, she was fucking right. And then we get this great moment where Lucifer returns to heaven. He's got his angel wings again. And he tells, and God tells him like, come sit on my left side, like old times. And they make up. And then um, Catalina gets told like, come sit on my right side. And that's the end of it. Basically the rest of it is like the dad and the mom or uh, the antichrist Jody and the mom live with i don't honestly the, the wife here is the wife there i don't think so uh but she was pretty into that luciferian plan so, so yeah. maybe not so much her but uh but they're living on earth with everybody um and it's all nice and and the Crosses kids are, are turning back up backside upside the correct way right side up yeah they're right side up yeah and uh the, it ends with the mom saying god bless you know good night boys and and like he's got a cup that says number one dad on it, which I thought was hilarious. But um, but yeah, that's the that's how it ends. It ends like super nice and peaceful, and everybody's forgiven. And this whole big epic conflict was ended with, you know, t- honestly, with people doing the right things, you know, like human it's it was humans that saved everybody, right? Like the mom was like, I'm going to instill in him good morals. And those morals, even if they're for a while challenged by temptation and stuff are going to eventually erode at that temptation. And my antichrist son is going to feel bad about stuff and he's going to turn his ways. He's going to see love everywhere. And that's kind of like what the message of the Bible is supposed to be, right? Like love, you know, love everybody. So, so um, I don't know. I thought that was really powerful. And especially as I don't, I'm not a believer or anything. So I was just like, wow, 
like that's actually like meaningful for like a book and the, the you know i don't know what you thought what, what did you think john you you grew up catholic and stuff so no 100 percent. and i think uh i think from that it, it hit me really hard too because like i was taught you know that you know yeah you love everyone but that ultimately uh the other the other side of that is like and you crush evil and you fight against evil and you like but the fact that it was like taking that ultimate of like no like even the evil person like you know and in this case like the most evil right. like you know like like embrace, love can get through that right like can get can get through them to them yeah and there was specifically a line um that uh jody says it's like uh he sees the mistakes and realizes that uh, his realizes that humans' awareness and being elevated. Um, he just marvels at that, and he basically thinks that uh, he wants to move forward and like help them like reach enlightenment. Like, like it's right. amazing that like despite all of that, you know, horrible shit that can happen, that that there's good. Which I mean, you kind of get that, but the fact that the bad guy finally sees that as well. <laughs> right, and it's not just that they're good or they're, that there's good in them. It's that originally he was mad because these are some like base creatures that God made, but because yeah. he's seen them evolve and he sees how his children have grown and their minds are growing and learning every day and that kind of shit, that's what's making him go, "Oh, like humans are special." So it's like yeah. humans changed his mind. Him, him having a family changed his mind. You know that that kind of thing. Which I think yeah, is the, probably in there on it for a reason because Mark Miller, when he wrote this, I don't know if he had kids, maybe he just had one kid, but he was still like kind of like in his twenties, kind of an edge lord when he first wrote the first trade. But now he's got two or three kids. You know, he's a family man, so it's like I'm sure that outlook changed how he was writing it. So yeah, and I think one of the kids even asked like like when he was telling him about the the stories, he's like, did uh yeah did did you know god and and satan ever make up and he's like nope <laughs> yeah no nope, uh, before they... yeah but yeah but now they have so yeah there, there was a fun little thing and then specifically like reading it i again you know i'm waiting for that extra twist and you know thinking again with mark miller uh miller uh that you know it was gonna be like oh when when it was when jesus when uh well, yeah, when Jesus was going, so Catalina was going so hard and being like, no, I'm going to judge everyone. I thought that was going to be a, that maybe it was going to be that, you know. Uh, she wipes out everybody? Jo yeah, Jody was, and then she ends up wiping out everybody, and it's like a hardcore ending that way, right. which would, all, you know, would also be like, you know. A it would job. be a good ending, too. Yeah, it would be like a, whoa. But. It would be different, yeah. But I like, I really like that he, he I like went, the sentimental he, ending, yeah. I do, too, and because you don't really get that a lot either. No. so and especially from from him so yeah it's uh you know even yeah even being someone who is not spiritual anymore like it still was really nice and a really unique way of doing it and i really enjoyed it yeah so i mean you gave some thoughts there but uh do you have any more and what what would you give it yeah overall I'll say i want to th throw out two um the art in this uh even though i know it changed uh maybe in the second or definitely the third one. I'll line. tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened with the change. So Peter Gross in 2004 did everything physically on paper. Sure. And then, and then he went and, digital. And they went digital. So that's the change is the digital. For sure. No, that's that's what I was going to say is I noticed the change, but not in a way where it it really affected the storytelling. Yeah, it wasn't it just, jarring. I could just, no, no, no. I could just tell. Yeah, I could tell like some things were a little smoother be, and not smoother because like he, you weren't drawing it was because you weren't drawing it. It was because it was, like you said, it was more digital. Um, but I, I liked it all. I thought it was really cool. All of the um, either full spreads or the full, you know, full page or half page of uh, something biblical or something uh, otherworldly were incredible. The, the, from the demons to like the, um, you know, seeing like a, a horseman or like death behind yeah. someone, um, you know, the end <laughs> spread of, of this like cartoon, not cartoonish, like, but like just, yeah, like the most devil, like the, like a, like an old medieval painting medieval, of, yeah. of the devil, yeah. the devil. And yeah, like, and then Michelangelo looking God, Leonardo, like embrace, Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci embracing in the, yeah. in the, like the, 
the the heavens and whatnot was just so delightful. I really enjoyed all the art yeah. in this uh, as well. Um, so yeah, it was really good. The writing, like I said, it started out. And I was like, why isn't I really like this? And by the end, I was like, oh, uh, yeah, I get what I liked it. Like, it totally paid <laughs> off. Like, that yeah. was a really good story. So, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a nine. Oh, nice. Very cool. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this one a 10. I liked this so much. Um, like, this was such a different story from Mark Miller's other stuff. And I, like I said, I think it's because he is like a dad now, like a family man. Um, and like the sentimentalness of him is this is like one of the few ones that's actually it's coming out, you know, like basically the, the Antichrist kids are what make him go like, oh, you know, the kids and his mom are what make him go like, oh, maybe I don't want to be an Antichrist. <laughs> so like, like, you know what? I like these people. I don't want them to die. So, yeah, like I just think that's super sweet and super nice. And the way it was told was super engaging, like the whole Waco thing and 9-11, all those events being included, even COVID and stuff like all of that just like amplified like every scene and every building or like every um, moment that was building up to this big moment of the antichrist and the Messiah showdown. And then it's just them talking, going, look, I, I don't think I want to have this happen. You know, <laughs> like, I don't think I want to have a fight. And I just love that. Like in the end, love overcame all, you know, like, <laughs> like I know it sounds cheesy, but the way it was done was so well, well yes. done, you know? saying it out loud like that sounds like yeah. it but like you said it was the execution of it yeah and the like you're, you're engaged how the fuck is they gonna do this obviously you know like what kind of battle is gonna happen here we keep talking about this and then it was the page turning uh the, it was the the script the seeing it get hot and heated and then the page turning to like Oh man, like it almost like like I said, like hitting at the heartstring, right? Like ah, oh, and it was done so well. Yes. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give this a ten because I think this is the best thing he's written. Um, I can't wait to watch the show, even though I'm not really a big media of comic book stuff person. So, like I'm not, I'm not super into Marvel movies or stuff or even DC movies. So. <laughs> yeah, no, you're a you're a <laughs> you're a, 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 a grump. A, a grinch? grump when it comes yeah. a grinch when it comes to, to superhero hey stuff. but it's not just it's not just superhero stuff it's like any media vision of something i like you know it's usually not as good as the comic to me but I get that. um but like i just think and i already know they changed some stuff so i don't know i don't even know like the the preview for it said a boy finds out he's the messiah and i'm like wait a second like he's not the Mess like <laughs> so i don't know if that's just a fake out for the show you know for, hopefully like, yeah, watching the show yeah um that's got to be so that gets people in and then at the end of the season they're like yeah what? i would hope I so but you know they could change it i don't know they do stupid shit all the time with comics so but, I, well, but one three, thing that they got that, at least three seasons right <laughs> yeah yeah and one, and one thing that they changed uh in the book between book one and book two coming out which was 16 years they they were gonna have two boys be the antichrist and the messiah and i thought it was a great decision to have um this girl Catalina be the the Messiah because just the way that it works out in the story just feels right. You know, um, I don't know. Everything about it was like done correctly, I think. And the him having the time to really think about it and change that I thought was a good thing. Um, and it was for the better that it took 20 years almost to, for it to come out. Um, for real. And, and for him to change the ending. Cause I read that too. Like they were going to have like a big battle finale going right. out all out at the end too so that was nice that that yeah like he that's what that's what i'm i think it's because he's a dad now and he has like this sentiment you know he's he's had the the uh exp the life experience of i love my children i love uh my wife and my mom and dad and like you know this is how i want the, the to actually end you know it's like and it's not just for him it's not just the antichrist and the messiah that are like we're all good i love that they showed god and lucifer literally like we're all tight, right? Like, 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 you know what? Come bring it on. in here, bro. Bring it in. Bring, bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> we're all we're all forgiven. And that makes sense though. Like, even in biblical lore, like I know it doesn't make sense, like from what we know of the Bible, but the idea that God could forgive everybody and everything would be good then. Like everybody, including demons and everything, right? Like he's God, he's all powerful. So uh, I like that concept because I've never heard anybody say that before. That the ultimate rapture would be for everybody everywhere to get saved every all at you know, once all at once yeah <laughs> so yeah there you go everyone everything everywhere all at once to get saved so <laughs> so 
Um, so yeah, I'm going to give it a 10. You're going to give it a nine. Uh, John, do you know what we're reading next week or what we're reading next time that the Patreons are going to vote on? Yes, we have our poll coming out. That should be out a little bit later today up on patreon.com forward slash planes, trains, and comic books, all one word. You can sign up for any tier Patreon and you get to vote in our monthly poll for one of our, uh, episodes as well as you get an exclusive podcast every month this month for our april poll we are going to be doing uh for um i i don't know what what, i don't remember what we're gonna call it specifically but we have pulp by ed brubaker oh there were just four random ones it was just like four i guess yeah yeah april random i don't know yeah i I try to I try to have a theme, but this one I didn't have really have one for April. Uh, we were doing uh, Pousse. Um, I, I, who do, who didn't? I don't remember. The, Pousse is uh, Daniel Klaus. That's right, Daniel Klaus. Uh, Chivalry by Neil Gaiman, and then uh, Tre. I, I don't want to pronounce that one wrong. Is it Tre? 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 Yeah, it's Tre. Okay. I, I don't don't even try to pronounce the author. It's a Filipino comic. That's like a horror comic that everybody has said is awesome. So I threw that in there as like a a wild card. Um, But yeah, so these are just kind of random ones that we wanted. They're books that I've wanted to read with people. So we'll see uh, what you guys vote on. And once again, if you'd like to vote on that, go to patreon.com slash planes, trains, and comic books and sign up for our Patreon. And, uh, and also you get the exclusive podcast, which John said, but this week or this month, I mean, we're for the exclusive, we're continuing our journey into Watchmen and we're doing part two, which is the next four issues, issues five through eight. So, yeah, so if you sign up now, you get part one. It's already out right now. It's exclusive for patrons. And then you'll be getting part two this month. And as speaking of patrons, we should thank our patrons. Yes. Uh, thank you to Otaku, Mike, Hoku, Christian, and Matthew. We appreciate it so much. Um, and you guys really help us out. We actually can like almost pay for our, our lips and uh, podcast uh, subscription now. So that's nice. <laughs> and it's very <laughs> helpful. I, I appreciate it. It, uh, it means a lot. So uh, thank you so much. And I think that's it. If, if you got anything else, John, let me know. No, we appreciate you guys so much. And I think we'll see you on the next one. On the next one. Bye. Bye.